But, you know, once we get into derby season, everybody starts throwing out stats and throwing out this and that, the Apollo <laughs> curse, the 17 post is, oh, it has never won in the history of Kentucky Derby. How much stock do you guys actually put into that information? Or kind of, you know, the curse or, or like sort of those Anything. weird. Yes. Yeah. So, I tr personally, I mean, I try to not let that, you know, kind of get into my mind, especially with the Curse of Apollo. So you look over the years, and um, actually, if I give a shout out to uh, John Piastic, who's a guy who um, who writes for DenonymousRacing.com and he manages the site, he went through and did a full log, full catalog of, you know, the horses who didn't run it to, uh, who ran the Derby over the past 15, 20 years. And you look at most of them, and most of them just ended up not being good horses. It's yeah. not like they you know, didn't win the Derby because they were great horses and they didn't have foundation, right? I mean, these were horses that just didn't pan out. Some of them were good horses, right? I mean, Curlin comes to mind. Right? There, there are a number of them that were good horses. Um, but, you know, each each one is its own particular case. And I think we're at, we're at a point now where even some of these three-year-olds who did run it to, like Hopper, for example, had one race at two, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, what did that race do for him? Mean, could we say definitively that was, you know, that race is going to give him the foundation he needs to, to, to run a big race here? So I, I think the way um, the way we've seen sort of horses evolve and the way that they're that they're running, that, that they're run and train up to the Derby, uh, or uh, basically the way they're campaigned up to the Derby, I think we've seen that evolve um, over time. And so I think the Curse of Apollo will fall eventually. I know Ed is a is, is a is a big you know, would you call yourself an Apollo truther? An Apollo least? truther, yeah. Yeah. So I, I know Ed probably disagrees on this. I wouldn't let that sort of discourage I mean if you really really love Justifier you convince Magnum Moon is the horse you know I think both of those horses of course have shown enough to date to think you know to believe that they, you know, they yeah, yeah. That, that's my, my yeah I mean they can win I'm definitely not one of those that oh this means they can't win it's always with this game it's percentages five to two in a 20 horse field when it hasn't been done is enough of a mitigating circumstance to call it an underlay. Magna Moon, I, I think, just isn't as fast as the rest. So that that's an added level. Justify, it's definitely an Apollo thing. And, you know, speaking of curses, Stormcat uh, line is O for the Derby. Uh, and he's a prolific sire who's had a lot of really good chances and hasn't gotten the job done. That applies to Mendelssohn as well. Mm -hmm. But again, he's a bigger price. So it's all in, in racing, you know, the calculus of weighing all those variables and deciding what you're willing to take and the price you want to take it. So, yeah, the, the Apollo thing I believe in, the Todd Pletcher stuff, if he can't win the Derby, I never did. It's a t you know, only 5% of the horses win year to year anyway. So I figured it would work out eventually. Unfortunately, I didn't figure it would work out on Always Dreaming, but that wasn't why I didn't like him. So. Yeah. Again, it's just what variables you think are important. The Apollo thing, I, I do think, is. Uh, do you want to chime in on Apollo? Do you want me to change the subject? <laughs> no, I mean, I think. Uh, <laughs> or any so called. Yeah. Course. Well, I mean, okay, so case in point, I just found this out today. Post six has only two <clears throat> wins in the history of the Kentucky Derby. Good magic is breaking from there. And a lot of the time, people think that post six is a good post position. But if you like good magic and you maybe see a stat like that or whatever kind of buzz is circulating, do you think that that is something that could sway your opinion at all? I, I think post is probably a little bit more random than it is not. Um, but my, here's my opinion on the Apollo curse. For one is... for So we're going back 136 years since Apollo won. So how many of those years would you consider modern era thoroughbred horse racing? And it's probably a very slim margin to wear. And then, then you add the derby points into the equation as well. I just think this is a different game today. Mm -hmm. um, and so a horse that is, is I don't want to say coddled because it's not the right word, but there is no impetus for these trainers to start their horse at Saratoga anymore. There's mm -hmm. just nothing. Uh, they don't get any points. Whereas before, if you won the Saratoga Special and you hit the board in the hopeful, you were in the Derby. Like, that was it. You were in, um, which is silly to think about. And that's why the Derby points made so much sense. Um, so I just think it's a different game. And marrying yourself to a rule like that is, uh, I think, is risky because it is going to go down at one point. That's just the way the game has changed. Yeah. That doesn't change the fact. I mean, if Justify's first race was December 31st, that doesn't change the fact he's only got three starts. 
And yes, he's got some talent. Yes, he's got some speed. But has he really been tested the way he's going to be tested in the Derby? Has he faced the adversity? Has the dirt hit his face? And all those questions are very legitimate. And if you don't feel, I don't think it'd be five to two. I think he's more likely to be seven to two than five to two. I agree. If, if you don't feel that he's the right price, then that's that's fine. But I, I think marrying yourself to that opinion based on the Apollo curse at some point is going to um, bite you in the rear end. Now I do think he's a superlative animal. Uh, a lot of talent, clearly, which we saw on display in the San Diego Derby. To your point, though, talking about what John wrote and looking at the other uh, Apollo horses, and yes, some don't pan out. Let's say things don't work out in the Derby. It's too much too soon, and he's done. Let's say the Breeders' Cup Juvenile turns out to be a dud race is possible. Uh, maybe not likely, but, I mean, that's in the realm of you know mm-hmm. storylines. Now, all of a sudden, he's beaten tomato cans and a maiden allowance. His big win is over Bolt Dioro, who was a two-year-old who never went on with it. What are we saying about Justify next year if that's the case? Yeah. Yeah, he's a favorite, but he reminds me a lot of Indian Charlie. In uh, 1998, people thought, oh, how's Real Quiet going to turn the tables on Indian Charlie? What's changed? It happens with, you know, lightly race getting that extra half furlong or full furlong, excuse me. So... It's things I think about at seven to two. Obviously, if he were Hoffberg's price, it would be a lot more exciting, but he's not. One thing I'm curious you said to Bolt Thoreau did not go on with it. I mean, on many numbers, he's sort of running, cycling back to what he ran as a two year old. Yes, no, that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if, if McKenzie doesn't get a nose down first, or, you know, he, I mean, you could argue that. If, if Bolt Thoreau would ship to Arkansas and one by five, he would be a second choice, and the storyline would be these two totally different Titans. Yeah. 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 Butting yeah. head, so I'm, and well, and that goes to sort of the real quiet thing too. Mm-hmm. Or silver charm and freehouse in '97. Why can't he turn the tables going a mile a quarter? I don't disagree. It yep. three times the price. A lot of times the runner up, like Funny Side, came back and yeah, you know, the runner up and the Woodmore came back to win. So yeah, it happened. Street sense and the bluegrass. Street, yeah. <laughs> well, that yeah, bluegrass. Talk post. There, there's some fun ones I could share with you, especially on Vino Rosso. One for thirty-one. <laughs> I'll take it. American Pharaoh was He's number due. 18, though. Yeah, he just went from post 18. Well, it was post 16. It was. Oh, the scratches, yeah. but the I saddle clock. Got the a... soul, technically, <laughs> was the last one to break from 18. What year? 82. Okay. Um, 1882 or 1982? 18, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, the year, yeah, the year was her follow. Um, so, yeah, but you're right. 17 is, is 0 for 39.